you know, like doing that race. Like when I got done, I was like, it really wasn't that bad. And then all of a sudden the next day I'm Googling like 50 mile races and 100 mile races, which I'll do in the next, in the next year 100%. Because I realized that I, I had so much, I was capable of so much more. And I think the fear of getting to a certain point and realizing that's, that's, that's all you got, that never becomes realized. Like that's just a fear. And that the reality is in every person's life, as soon as they reach what they think may be their full potential, they realize that kind of the ceiling is the roof or whatever, whatever like that, that that's now the new floor to what's possible. And that to me is the exciting part about it when you can flip that. Um, but I think that's a, it's an interesting thing to, to look at that fear of reaching it versus once you've reached it, realizing that it's going to change. to another episode of The Modern Man. This is a series where we tackle and we discuss some of the challenges and the issues that men face in today's society. Now the focus here is growth and community. In today's episode, we wanna talk about challenges. So joining me today, we have Ben Harris. What's up, my dude? It's over here. We have the usual suspects, <laughs> Tyler Harris. This is The Modern Man, by the way. Not yeah. The Modern Man, The, <laughs> the Modern Man. That's two E's. Tim Beckerow. T Tech in What's the house. Up? Thanks for joining us this uh, this morning, evening, whenever folks are listening to it. Uh, thanks for being here. We want to jump into the topic today, which is challenges. But before we do that, let's introduce our, our guest panelists for the day. Ben, tell us what you do and let folks at home know who you are. Thanks, my brother. Yeah, thanks for having me. For real, I'm stoked to be here. For real, with all of all of you gents. Uh, so I own a personal development brand. It's called Goalink. So every single week, we we put out challenges that. Um, really cover the entire human spectrum. So last week it was about asking for help. So I went to a therapist for the very first time in my life. Sometimes it's vulnerability, sometimes it's cold showers. This coming week it's about diet and nutrition to find like your food rules and I partner with brands every single week. And so that's what we do and so I am a fiend for challenges. Um, so thanks for having me. Yeah, and that's why when I thought of the seems topic, like a setup. Yeah, <laughs> it's a setup. Yeah. This is just for me. <laughs> Thank you guys. You didn't know this was a promotion for your business. Yes, I appreciate it. <laughs> so jumping into it, talking about challenges, they come in different shapes, forms, and things like that. I think it's important for men to face challenges head on. So what are? I'll ask to get personal quick. What are some challenges that maybe each of you have? conquered in your lives that help you get confidence for anything else that might be down the road? Yeah, for me, it's small things. Like, there are big things, but for me, that's why I like to do weekly stuff or daily stuff. To me, it's like really, I like to seek out challenges before they seek me out. Because regardless, it's going to come at me. So to me, it's how I prepare for it. It's like, why does Tyler go to the gym? To get strong. Like, why do you go to like, to build up your cardio, same thing like why am I looking every day every single week so I can build up my stamina for challenges so when those things do come at me, it's still not easy, but I'm already kind of built up for it, calloused a little bit. I like that, man, because um, you know I've recently become aware of the fact that I'm addicted to progress. Yes. And I really think that progress is where happiness and fulfillment ultimately come from. And challenges are what create the opportunity for the growth that's required for that progress to take place. And so we know that challenges are gonna happen naturally, that there's gonna be challenges, obstacles, things that pop up and we have to overcome. But I like this, this idea of having daily, weekly challenges that you're proactively pursuing because it gives you the opportunity to step into that space of progress, to step in the space of being able to grow and overcome and you know, accomplish those, those things that you're that week, that day going after and ultimately becoming the best version of yourself on a daily or weekly basis, which is, which is awesome. It's all about progress. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think the day to day is important and I, and I like it being tied to something because it's, you know, I, I want to say to people, you don't want to just go out into the world 
and just look for a challenge, right? Like just wake up. I think you need to get involved with, you know, setting, setting some goals for the type of challenge you want based on progress if you, that's something that you would like to see because there's going to be a challenge baked within the challenge, right? So it's challenge enough to try to do something. And, uh, and, and recently, one of the things for me was a big challenge to just walk away from lots of investment, something that you put a lot of money into, a lot of time, all the emotion behind it, you know, all of those things. And man, I was resistant. I didn't want to take on the challenge for several years. Like my wife was even saying to me, this is what we need to do. I'm not ready. I'm not, you know what I mean? And it wasn't because I was afraid of it, but sometimes the emotional side of and what you've done and what you've put in it and not having the right perspective sometimes or point of view on what, what you're going through can be tough because I was not seeking to go through that type of challenge, but I actually needed it to see the progress that I needed, right? That's cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, well, I like it because it's not, that's not what you think of typically, at least me. I don't think, because I'm like you going forward to something, but I like removing something or stepping away from something because that's also an extreme challenge. Yeah. One thing you said that I think you all touched on was being ready or kind of getting to a challenge before it gets presented in front of you. A lot of times in our lives, um, you're either heading into a problem, you're in a problem, or you just left one, like it's always going to happen. So a challenge arises. What are some things that are important for your mindset to tell you when you face a challenge, whether it's losing a job, losing a relationship, going through a hardship, those can all be challenges within themselves. What are some things you tell yourself to get you through those dark times? And one, one thing, I, I did a podcast with a guy who's got a company called Ever Forward. And at the end of the podcast, I asked him, you know, what, what is Ever Forward? What does that mean for you? And he said, well, you never have to get ready if you stay ready. Yeah. I was like, huh, I like that. And, and I've listened uh, recently to some stuff by Erwin McManus. He's got a, a podcast called Battle Ready. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's about the fact that when challenges arise, you don't have to get ready to combat them you, when you're in a, in a state of readiness. Like when you're understanding that things are going to happen, obstacles are gonna pop up every single day. So you're constantly trying to become the best version of yourself and grow yourself and, and learn new things and you know, put different tools in your toolkit to when something arises, this time it's a little different you're ready to accomplish those things or ready to overcome those things. Um, so I think to me, it's, it's a big part of it is it's this idea of staying ready, not having to get ready, but I yeah. guess ultimately you have to get ready to stay ready. But, um, <laughs> yeah. like chicken and, chicken and the egg. Chicken and the egg, right? I want both. Get to stay ready. <laughs> you know what but, I mean? If I, if I get one, I get the other. So I guess that's the first goal is, is how do you stay ready? You know, how do you get into that, that, that place? And I think challenges, uh, seeking those challenges gets you into a place where you can feel like, man, I'm, I'm accomplishing and I'm, I'm, I'm going after something every day. So I'm always ready for the next thing to pop up. I think that may make sense to someone. It's funny because as we do these, these episodes and we start with a topic of challenges and kind of the gist I'm getting from all three of you, and I'm kind of thinking it myself is challenges for mental toughness or just kind of, you mentioned calloused, right? Becoming someone who can withstand challenges. So in order to do that, it's almost like we have to strategically navigate and put ourselves in manageable positions of pain, if you would, whether it's cold showers, not hitting the snooze button, getting out of bed, building yourself to withstand a certain amount of pressure. What are some daily activities you guys do to kind of keep the pressure on in a manageable way. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it's so small, but cold showers. Like, I started those, like, I don't I can't remember sometime last year. And now it's, I used to do it at the end of my shower. Do you still do that? Yeah. So I used to do it at the end for like 10 to 30 seconds. And then I started doing them at the beginning. But before I came here, it was a complete cold shower. And so it's just interesting, like that progress, but I intentionally do it to go in to, to breathe through it because it's not like let me just take a cold shower because it's popular or it makes me tough it's like i put myself in an extreme situation and my body tenses up but then i can like breathe through it and then i realize i can get through that point every single day 
So that's just one small thing. It's funny you mentioned that because I don't know if you guys take cold showers too, but I, I mean, I turn that Only if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The hot water I, heater's out. Yeah. <laughs> I turn that bad boy all the way cold at the end of my showers. And I literally thought this the other day, it's not that cold anymore. Yeah. Like when I first started, I was like, ooh, I, but now I just, like, it's just like, whatever. So maybe upping the intensity is something I need to do with start with it cold. Yeah. You're so also like showering at like that. three in the morning though, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, at you're night. not even really awake at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I like what you said, creating that pressure, you know, um, there's a great book, Think and Grow Rich, and I encourage anyone to read it. But you know, what is, you have to have that def, the definiteness of purpose, right? What is, def, what is definite here? But there needs to be a demand for what you desire. So you have to, so if you're trying to build up some sort of callousness, you know, you have to say, what is the pressure, you know, or what is the thing that I'm going to apply the pressure to in order to grow, right? Wouldn't that be part of getting ready, staying ready, but also building, you know, the ability to do that, to withstand it. Eventually the cold water doesn't feel cold anymore. So it's not that you're immune to cold, you're just immune to that amount of cold, you know what I mean? Or it feels different. Your body gets used to it. So it's a conditioning of sorts that you have to do. And, I, you know, and just simple things, I think, back to what Ben had said earlier, I think it goes back to simple things like just your daily habit or routine. But you can't just do the thing that it's just the habit. Like I get up, you know, I fill out my, my planner. I answer 10 questions every morning and I answer seven at night every single day. And I put all this stuff in there because I want to live into my day. I want to be in control of what I can be in control of because, you know, things are going to challenge you, period. But it's also saying, where do I make myself uncomfortable on purpose? You know what I mean? To set it up, going back to the original, you have to put, you have to take on challenges. So in other words, what are you going to invite to say that's my next thing that I'm going to do? But I think it needs to be tied to a purpose though. You got to really figure out like, what am I, is this just for me? Which is okay sometimes, I think it's for me. I want to know if the juice is worth the squeeze. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I really want to, I just don't want to do something to say I did it. You know, I mean, I can go try to eat a 52 ounce steak and eat the gristle too and get a t-shirt, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but what's it for? <laughs> you know, like, I, I think I need to have, and that's part of it, maybe it's a good question for men, is what, you know, what is it that thing that you are looking for that additional challenge that you have to have the necessary pressure in order to develop the right callus right or get yourself to where you can handle it like is it what's what is that thing other than i did that yeah. man this is this is something that i love to talk about there's not a day that goes by where i don't say this one phrase which is if you seek discomfort i've said this on this on this series before if you seek discomfort the world will deliver you pleasure yeah. if you seek comfort the world will deliver you pain it's just a fact and so over the last five years my business partners and i we've We've just been in this pursuit of seeking different ways to make ourselves uncomfortable. And some of those have been business related, some of those have been personal, the, the cold showers, the you know, ice baths, the different things. Some of them are physical uh, with you know, exercise and, and things like that. But constantly searching for ways to get us out of our comfort zone. And to me, to answer your question, uh, Tim, the one thing that I that I seem that I see as as the most congruent, I think, outcome of those things is mental toughness. Yeah. So it's callousing the mind. And for me recently, I found that in running. Um, I, had, I did a Instagram live uh, a couple of two nights ago, I think, because I did this big ultra marathon um, last Saturday, which I'll probably talk about at some point on this on this uh, episode but it was extremely uncomfortable. Like that was crazy for me to go do that. Well, it had been six days and I hadn't ran yet and I needed to go out and run because I'm doing another ultra marathon this coming Saturday. And I went out and ran five miles. And the funny thing was just because I went out and ran, this was a full 32 miles on Saturday, didn't make the five mile run any easier. Like it was still uncomfortable for me and there was still a lot of discomfort as part of, cause I was still sore. But just because I'm a 235 pound person, yeah, like, you know, running's running difficult. Sucks. Running as a bigger guy is difficult. And at first I was like, man, this sucks. Like, this should be easy. Like, I just did that. But then I flipped it in my brain. I was like, oh, man, this is awesome. 
because I've now found something in my life that I can go to that will always provide me with that level of discomfort, but that I can always get through it and I can push through it and that there are different levels, you know, further distances, faster times, that I can always do something to make myself feel that level of discomfort that puts my mind in that place where like, you're like, man, you had this challenge, you overcame it, and man, you're so much more mentally tough for getting through that. And, and I'm super grateful to have found that. I want to translate a question that somebody asked me, and this is to everybody here, because to me, it makes sense. I was telling somebody, I was like, oh, my buddy ran a 50K. And their flat out question was like, why would anybody do that to themselves? So when we're talking about challenges and whether it's something as extreme as a 50K, we're talking about putting ourselves through pain and discomfort. And we know to build that mental callus, but just to kind of reiterate, re reiterate the question, why do that to yourself? Why put yourselves through that much discomfort? So for me, it's part of the era we live in. Everything's so comfortable. Um, like for real, like every single day, I think like how, like yeah, life could be better. Of course, like anything can always be better, but our life really is so comfortable and so quick and so convenient that like back in the day, a thousand years ago, they weren't saying like, oh, let's, I mean, maybe they were, I don't know. But in my mind, they're like, no, let's challenge ourselves because life, like they were just trying to survive. We're not just trying to survive anymore. So it's like, we have to do that. Or for me at least, right? Like I have to do that or else I get bored and unfulfilled because there's no challenge. And kind of, I think, are those Gary V shoes right there? Yeah. Right, and one thing that Gary always says is like he loves losing and like a person, a personal experience today, like my brand is still pretty new. And so I put out this thing, like I asked people like, hey, are you afraid of being alone? And if they answered yes, then I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this thing like in a couple weeks, join me. And so I put out this free thing of like, I wanted to do like this quick program. It was today, as of, like just earlier, no one showed up, no one responded. And then at first I was like, man, that sucks. But then I was like, this is freaking great because like it gets me fired up of like a new level of progress that I want to get to. Like it fires me up and that's why you do it because you find new levels of growth. And I think everyone here is a little bit weird and crazy that way, but I would rather be a little bit crazy than just comfortable and chill. There's so many levels to the irony of you doing it something based on being alone and you showed up and you were by yourself. <laughs> it's like actually incredible. Like you were alone dude, I'm always on alone, this dude. challenge for being alone. <laughs> you should post about that and say, yeah. so let me tell you what it felt like. Apparently yeah, all bro. of you were in on this <laughs> and just didn't let me know that I was gonna have to it was gonna be my challenge. Oh, man, man I, like great. the whole the 50k like why? To me it was like why not? Like it was so crazy. It was Thursday, like 11 a.m., 12 p.m., and I got into my office, and I'd worked out that morning, and I was getting some stuff done around the office, and all of a sudden, like, I got this feeling that hit me. It was just like, you need to go do some kind of a crazy challenge. You need to go get super, super uncomfortable. And so I was like, uh, okay, um, let, me look, let me look at some races. So I get online, I'm just Googling different races, and I was thinking to do some kind of crazy this, and I was just looking for marathons thinking like a couple weeks out, a couple months out, and I see this one that just like popped out and uh, it was a 50K. And I was like, man, 50K, that's like 31 miles. Like, that would be crazy. And then it said sat it was Saturday, like June 29th, which was like 36 hours from then. Oh. And I was like, that would be really crazy. I literally like marinated on it for like five minutes and I was just like done, register. I had worked out legs that morning the furthest I'd ever ran was 13 miles in my entire life. And that was like three times in the last month. And uh, all of a sudden committed to go do this. It was a full 32 mile um, race. And so like the why was just like, man, for me in that moment, I was like, why not go try it? Like, I know that something is gonna happen during that time, like something's gonna happen. This was a crazy race because it started at 5.30 PM. So I didn't end till 12.30 AM in the morning. So you're in the pitch dark for the last half of it with a headlamp on. And I was like, I cannot wait for that last like six, seven miles running in pitch dark for whatever is gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna be super uncomfortable, but I like, it was basically making a commitment, like signing up, yes, registered to grow myself. Like there's no possible way you can go do something like that and not grow. 
And if you're addicted to progress and if you're addicted to growth, then those are the things that you live for. Like those are the things that you want to have happen. Um, and for me, it was in a time in my life where there was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of chaos going on in different areas of my life. And I was like, man, all this stuff is just like up in the air. I'm going to go do something that I can control, something crazy, strenuous, difficult, uncomfortable, but that I can control the outcome and I can go put in the work. And man, it made me like I felt unbelievable afterwards. It was to me, it was a big success, not in the time or that I accomplished it, just what it did for me personally. You know, I think so many people won't go after things. It's just, it just comes back to the fear of failing. I mean, in most cases, right? They, they always want to do the thing that they can win. I mean, look at kids, two kids playing video game. They've been beating everybody in the house. Their friend comes over, sits down one time, hadn't even been on the controller and beats them. That per kid wants to turn it off. Don't want to play no more. Yeah. Right. You understand what I'm saying? It's because, you know, there's a lot of ego involved in some of that stuff. And a lot of the ego, the same ego that'll get a guy to, hey girl, you know, yell out some thinking he looks good and all this stuff. It's that same ego that'll shut him down, right? Because ego is basically insecurity with makeup. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like literally what we've got going on. And so sometimes we're, we're, we, we press ourselves down, we're suffering, right? Or we, we overshoot, right? So we're dealing with these two experiences and I mean, what you both are saying is it's because of honor. Like what's, I think it's a reason like I'm doing it. There's honor. There's something you're trying to honor yourself with. You're trying to self-actualize, right? And it reminds me, uh, there was a movie like The Last Samurai or something like that. And I think it was Morgan Freeman was in the movie. And this line was so powerful. And I think this can apply to any other descriptor you want to put in here. He said, he said to the samurai, um, he said, which was Clive Owen, I think was the guy or his knight or protector or something. And he said, no, it was the last night. That's the movie. He said, the wounds of honor are self-inflicted. And that's so powerful. So in other words, because I'm honorable, someone said, well, I was just trying to do the honorable thing and I got hurt and wounded. No, no, no. If you're trying to do honor, that's self-inflicted. If you're trying to make progress, you're going to wound yourself. It's self-inflicted. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not putting it in someone else's hands. So that's the type of control we're talking about here. That's the kind of thing that can help us put our ego in check. That's the thing that can help us when our ego is low, you know, with the insecurity, putting a little makeup on it. You know what I'm saying? We're showing up the ego. I mean, I think that helps us or the super ego where we're pushing too far. It's that one that says, get up, do something, wound yourself. I like that, wound yourself. What was that quote again? The wounds of honor are self-inflicted. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so a lot of times they say, you know, Tyler being in the pitch black of night on mile 30, <laughs> or, you know, you trying to put out the, this event to invite people and you sitting by yourself or any challenges that somebody might go through. In those moments, even if you're at the gym working out, whatever challenge might be, they talk about the fight or the flight, or really they kind of say, you find out who you are. And maybe some people would avoid challenges because they don't really want to know who they are. Maybe they're afraid to find out who they are. So they kind of keep themselves at arm's length away from the distance because they don't want to pull back the curtains. When you put yourselves in challenges, what are some things you guys have discovered about yourself or what are you, some things you think people can discover about themselves by and I keep saying strategically on purpose, because like you mentioned, you don't want to just eat a huge steak just to get a t-shirt that has to be purpose. Or like break behind. both your legs because like, oh yeah, this would be a fun challenge. I did it, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like, hey, selfie on the edge of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, I guess, what are some, some things that people can discover about themselves or things you've discovered about yourself through challenge? I'll tell you what, I'll just say simple, and I'm gonna say the real honest things. I found out that um, I was arrogant, I found out that I was cocky, which goes along with arrogant. I found out that I was very afraid, insecure. I, was, I found out that, um, you know, basically I'm manufacturing things that aren't real. When I put myself through key, those are the real things I found out. Those are the real things that I had to come to grips with that we all walk around like that in humanity. The difference was I felt like, well, if God knows it, I don't care who else knows. That was one of the best steps I could take and then kind of step out into it. 
and go, yeah, that's right. The reason I did that is because I was afraid. I did that because, yes, I'm being arrogant, I'm trying to compensate for something else. I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Overcompensate. You know what I mean? I'm trying to overperform in this situation. And it's all because of those things. That's when I put myself in a real challenge that was worth it. That was my first round of revelation. It wasn't that I, oh, look what I can do. It was, wow, look at the mess you are. That was the first thing, but it was the best thing. Man, I'm working through this in my head right now as we sit here. And so this may not, might not make 100% sense. Percent sense, it's hard to say. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of people fear ultimately realizing what their full potential is as in like reaching it as much as we all say we want like that's our goal is to reach our full potential I think there's a little bit of fear in realizing oh that's that's that was my potential what I've found in these challenges and seeking discomfort is every single time you possibly you put every ounce of your soul soul into something to reach your full potential you realize it just gets scooted out a little bit further and it grows a little bit further out and that that fear that's holding you back from trying to reach that potential is what's holding you back from that potential being so much more than you could ever fathom in your mind um you know like doing that race like when i got done i was like it really wasn't that bad and then also the next day i'm googling like 50 mile races and 100 mile races, which I'll do in the next, in the next year 100%, because I realized that I, I had so much, I was capable of so much more. And I think the fear of getting to a certain point and realizing that's, that's, that's all you got, that never becomes realized. Like that's just a fear. And that the reality is in every person's life, as soon as they reach what they think may be their full potential, they realize that kind of the ceiling is the roof or whatever, whatever like that, that that's now the new floor to what's possible. And that to me is the exciting part about it when you can flip that. Um, but I think that's a, it's an interesting thing to, to look at that fear of reaching it versus once you've reached it, realizing that it's going to change and it's gonna grow. I like that. Yeah, for me, it was just being extremely humbled. Like, like for real, like with you, Tim, like kind of like, yeah, my ego has been like shattered, man. Like I'll be <laughs> straight up like, cause I moved here five months ago thinking I'm intentionally putting myself in a place where I know zero people, new city, new job, new relationships, da 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 da. And I was like, I'm intentionally doing this. This would be awesome. And it has been, but shit's been hard, dude. Yeah. Like straight up, like, and that's what I've learned, but that's completely normal. And that's what I didn't understand is that whether you want to say we're all broken or none of us are broken, that's what I learned is it doesn't matter who you are, how successful or how like we're all the same and connected that way. And that's what I, I became more connected with humans um, and had more. I have more empathy for people more than I ever have because I've been broken. Wow. That's awesome, man. Yeah. You know, I love you. I mean, I, it should be hard always has been, tough always has been, difficult ha always has been the norm, should be the norm. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and I, I love hearing what you're saying, it's like coming through that process and, and landing in that spot, man, and just, because mm -hmm. I think you're a fantastic person, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the times we've chatted, I just think, you know, and you've got a story to tell, I think it's awesome, man. It's, well, if you think about the idea of this challenge, the only type of people that experience a life, like life is a challenge. Man. Yeah, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> and but, it's an experiment. And, and the funny thing is like, we all laugh about that and say no matter what, and of course, but for some people life isn't a challenge. Yeah. And those are the people that are going nowhere. Like people that's life is comfortable, yeah. it's easy, they're not challenged, like, like that is what you don't want to be. It makes me sick, I'll be honest. Yeah. Well, but, and so for us, it's trying to be the opposite and to take that to the extreme and to realize that like, if I want to become the best version of myself, that a challenge is required, discomfort is required, pain is required. All of these things are just a prerequisite for getting to where ultimately you want to be. 
And if you understand that on the front end, then it makes it a whole lot easier when you face a challenge because you're like, oh, no one showed up. Like, that's gonna happen. Like, and I'm, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna go do it again and, and nobody may show up the next time. But if I keep doing it, if I keep doing it, if I keep doing it, it's gonna get better. And you're gonna grow in the process and you will be so much better for having no one show up than have having a hundred people show up and, and it just be incredible the very first time. And like, there's no story to that. Uh, there's, no, there's no real challenge in that. And I think some of that's a good check. Once again, it comes back to check your own ego when things like that happen, right? I love it because it's not that I can't do something. Because mm -hmm. you came prepared, right? You were ready. I was. I prepared quite a bit, honestly. Yeah, I would have come <laughs> if I was, but I was trying to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But, you know, but some of those things that happen, they're great. The challenge, I mean, that in itself, life is always going to hand you a challenge anyway. I mean, life is about tension. I, I really believe it's all about friction, right? Motion creates friction. Why do you put oil in an engine with pistons that move, right? It's called viscosity buildup, right? It, you gotta, it's going to heat up, yeah. right? You got to put oil in there to make sure you don't burn it up, right? And I think that's what we need when we're running across that friction. We need to understand what is that, that oil? What is the thing that needs to happen? But it's going to put things in check. It's going to get us to be more mindful, right? So I think welcoming challenge is something that will help us to be more mindful, more aware, more aware of ourselves, more aware of others, really get down to what am I actually doing as well. I think a lot of questions could be answered by like really looking at the challenge that you're in and embracing it and kind of sorting yourself out through it. You know what I mean? You might get a lot of, a lot of answers you didn't, you've been looking for yeah. because of the challenge. And kind of, kind of shifting gears here because I think so far this episode, we've really been talking about preparing for challenges and putting ourselves into challenge, which is great because that's all about you know, staying ready so we don't have to get ready, putting ourselves and building ourselves into a man that is ready to take on the challenges that come their way. Now, let's talk about the unforeseen challenges. You lose your job or, or something unforeseen were to happen. How do you navigate that in real time? Something people pick up on me, they say, oh, you're usually calm under pressure. That's because me worrying about it, me getting the anxiety doesn't solve it any faster. I try and get straight to work and think, okay, what's the problem? What are the little things I can solve along the way? I might, know, I might not know how to solve the problem. Let's just say losing my job. Okay, I lose my job. First thing, how long can I stay afloat? Second thing, where should I send my resume? Where, does, where do my skills apply to? I think I get into problem solving mode right away. So what are some tactics you do to solve problems, whether they're physical, financial, emotional, in relationship? How do you kind of attack those head on? I think it would be beneficial. Like, have you ever been a worrier or have you ever felt anxiety though? Because I would agree, you do feel like I, like I felt like a bond between us since I've been here. Like you're definitely very chill and calm and composed. But do you, for the people out there watching or listening, I think the first thing to address is like, if you're freaking out, it's okay. Sure. You know, because like that's the natural response and that's what I've learned. When you just change a massive thing or something in your life changes like this big, um, whatever it may be, like it's flipping your world. And so of course it's gonna be on like a new view and you're gonna be freaking out. So I think I just wanna acknowledge that it's okay to feel like you have no idea what the hell you're doing, you know? But then from there, there are tactical things, of course, to improve from there. Yeah, and, so, and that makes reacting versus responding. We all do react, right? And then we move into a healthy response, right? So some may only react like a millisecond, microsecond, that might be you, and then you move into good, what's your response now going to be? Uh, for me, I can, depending because my personality is like this, you know, um, you know, my wife, she's like that. And, but I, I'm a roller coaster guy, right? I manage it well. I manage myself well uh, for most, most times. <laughs> uh, but I, I feel that anxiety. I know the anxiety. Um, and what I have to do, one of the tactics I do is I really try to put things in categories. 
I try to say, okay, so here's what I do. It's like, so where does this belong? So first thing I do is I start with my feeling. What am I feeling? Then I start bringing my mind into it so I don't get into the negative of it because there's no good or bad emotion. It's what you assign to it, right? So then I move in. Now, where is that taking me? If I allow this to continue this feeling, where will it end up taking me, right? So I do that. Now what I do is I kind of go into, you know, my feelings versus the reasons, right? So I need to get into some of that. And I like to kind of break it down and kind of go, so the, okay, now that I've got my f feeling, I want to know, I'm going to work with this one. I see where it's taking me, but I'm going to put it here. But then what is my reason here? Like in other words, and my rational, you know, my rational mind. How can I get my mind back involved with the saying, now what can I do with this? Where can I go with this? What are my options? I always turn my mind into positive questions. I don't want to spend my time in why. The only time I want to ask questions why is when it deals with my purpose. Back to my own why. When I get into why am I doing this? Why is this happening to me? Why is, I turn into a victim or I can become a martyr in a situation. But the what taps into a different part of my brain to release a different part of chemical that allows a different chemical to allow me to be more productive and positive in working with the problem. Does it change the problem? Absolutely not. But I can tell you for me, what he's talking about, I have high adrenaline anyway, and I can get myself to where my Apple Watch will be telling me I'm running at 126 BPMs and I'm sitting still. Really? Wow. And that's just, once again, we're being real, gentlemen. Yeah. It's the modern man. <laughs> yeah. And that's scary when that happens. And I don't have a heart problem. I don't have any kind of issue like that, but that's the type of adrenaline flow I have in me that same anxiousness that would trip me out. And that's when the surprise happens. You understand what I mean? The, the thing with, you know, variety, when you talk about the six core human needs, variety being one of them, you know, surprises in that element, but there's the surprises we like and the ones we don't like. So when it comes to those bigger things, it is a challenge and it is tough. And so for me, the first thing I have to do is I have to bring myself down to the earth, not look at anyone else, not just drill into the situation. I gotta bring me down first. I gotta identify what's going on inside me get my mind to move into a productive space with it, so then I can say, now, where can I go with this? What are my options? Because if not, I turn desperate. Instead of making a drastic decision, I make a desperate one. And desperation never bodes well in my world. I'm glad you said what you said about blame, because I think for me, a big, a big part of getting through these challenges that are unexpected is not putting the blame on other people and taking full ownership of it yourself. Because as soon as you take the fingers that are pointing outwards and pointing them at yourself, you're basically taking the keys back to the handcuffs that are, that are tying you to whatever it is that's, that's happening in your life. And so taking ownership means you're, you're in control. Yeah. And if there's a challenge, if there's an obstacle, if there's uncertainty, I wanna be in control. And you know, for me, one of the things that I've been focusing on lately is happiness and that my happiness really it really doesn't have anything to do with the challenges that are coming the unexpected challenges that may you know come up tonight it doesn't really have to, anything to do with my happiness like i know where my happiness comes from it comes from inside not external and so I think pain, understanding that there's going to be pain, like when, when an obstacle arises, when a big challenge is your face, you lose your job, there's going to be pain. And to understand that that's normal and you should feel that pain. Like that's it's your body's natural way of reacting. And, and there's a big difference between pain and suffering. Yeah. And so that pain is there to show you like, hey, this is bad. Like, hey, this is not good. Or, hey, this is dangerous. But suffering is what you do on the inside, playing over and over and over again through that situation that created that pain. And that suffering is what will steal your happiness. And so for me, like, the first thing is just perspective, but like, right or wrong, good or bad, who's to really say what's what? It's all subjective. But I have so much peace within knowing that right or wrong, good or bad, I get to control what makes me happy. And I can be happy in the worst of situations externally because I get to choose happiness. And if I have a choice, if I can choose whether I want to be happy or miserable, given these external factors, given these challenges, given these, you know, a loss of a job or a breakup or a, you know, a business partner does something like if I can choose happiness or misery in that situation, why on earth would I ever choose misery? 
But I think so many of us get caught up in feeling like that pain is so real, which it is, but we internalize it and then we go through suffering because we play over and over and over and over again. And all of a sudden we realize like we've chosen to be miserable. Like you have, you have taken ownership on the fact that like this situation happened, it was painful, but I have now internalized it to where I have chosen to be miserable. But the alternative is also true. Like you can have a situation that arrives, pain is present, but you choose to be happy in the face of pain and you have complete ownership over that. And that's what gives me so much peace every single day, knowing that like whatever happens today is gonna happen, I'm gonna be happy regardless. I'm just gonna do my thing and, and, and not worry about those things which causes the anxiety and which causes more pain and it's just a, a wheel. Uh, but I think to be able to choose happiness regardless is super, super empowering. Yeah, that reminds me of the book, uh, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, almost kind of talking about through the experiences in the concentration camps, almost like if you had a strong enough why, you could withstand almost any how. But knowing that the happiness, the joy comes from inside, not through external situations. And when we talk about navigating problems, right, a GPS needs two destinations, where you're going and where you are, and a lot of times, people don't acknowledge their current situation. They don't fully absorb it and accept it. And because of that, they can't navigate accurately how to solve the problem, how to get to the resolution. So I think a lot of people can get benefit from just taking inventory of where they are, what got them to that location, accept it, and then start laying down the map on how to get out of that. Kind of wrapping things up, what are some what are some uh, manageable challenges people could put themselves in to, to prepare them for the world? As we kind of wrap up, a message to the men watching or anyone watching that you want to kind of give them, do this, this, and this, or seek this and this and this to help yourself deal with any challenges that life might throw your way. Because I can promise you life's going to throw challenges your way. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Um, I think the first thing for me is you can't, if you avoid the problem, it's only, it's only going to create more problems. And so that's why you should go straight at it. Because if you go around it, like you see the problem, if you take it straight on, like you for the most part know what you're getting yourself into. But if you try and go around it, not only it takes a lot longer, but there's a lot of other unforeseen things that, that happen. So, and I would just say start small um, because like Tyler, like, he's trained like you're right like he's he's a practiced like self challenger i don't know what to call it but you know like he's he's practiced self challenger crazy. self challenger that doesn't sound like crazy it's called crazy, <laughs> crazy. Your, new, your new car do you know self challenger <laughs> yeah i would say just like start small you know like what's something that you hate doing what's something that sucks do you not like waking up at 5 do you not like going to the gym or do you not even like walking do you not like broccoli Shit, just eat broccoli then. Like, start small. Yeah. Broccoli challenge, so that's Monday. <laughs> that's starting tomorrow. Broccoli challenge. Everyone's eating carrots. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That'll work. Um, yeah, you know, there's so many ways you can go at it, mm -hmm. but if I was gonna, you know, I, I would say do, do things that are accessible. Get some confidence, right? Because that's, like, I would agree, just start small, something simple, and but the thing is, be consistent with something simple. That's the other part. Um, get some accountability with it. Sh share it with somebody. Tell somebody, hey, this is what I'm doing, something I'm working on. I want you to be hold me accountable with it. Now, make sure it's someone who actually will do that, <laughs> obviously. Not someone's like, yeah, bro, you know I got your back, you know. And, uh, you know, but then the other thing is, is, is make sure you're journaling, journal about the progress and the process. You know, and I really believe it's important that nothing listens better than a blank piece of paper. Something I've said for years and years, shortest pencil is better than the longest memory, right? And what's nice is you can go back to what you've written down and you can read back through it. So don't write it and put it away. You write it and you review it afterwards. So you can kind of really build a new narrative and a monologue inside yourself. Because see, today, what you do today, tomorrow is going to use. And so everything we're doing today, the things, our behaviors, things that we say, all of that, tomorrow we'll be curating all of that stuff. 
and that will be the materials that you're going to that's going to be used to build tomorrow right so you really want to spend more time getting that inside of yourself creating new narratives giving yourself a little bit of boost of confidence getting some accountability there but you know and then doing something small where you can go look what look, oh wow i did it. it's you know it's broccoli yeah. <laughs> right and i hate it hashtag it's broccoli <laughs> <laughs> I think each of us could list 10 things for you to go out and, and make yourself uncomfortable or, or a challenge that you could go do. But the reality is if you just think to yourself, what's something that would make me uncomfortable, but that would actually move me forward by doing it. And you know exactly what it is. Like you can, you can, you can list those a mile long, but I think it's so important what Tim said to find someone that can pursue these things with you, to find someone that can do these challenges with you because the reality is it's very difficult to do life alone. Uh, that's the reason why this modern man platform exists and that accountability is gonna be key in order to actually stick to these things that you say you're going to do. Um, so it's really great to watch this video. I'm gonna go out and get uncomfortable tomorrow. But then if you don't have anybody that's asking you like, hey man, did you go run yesterday morning? Or hey man, did you get up and uh, do that workout this morning? Or hey, did you eat your broccoli? If you don't have somebody calling you out, you're just not gonna hold yourself accountable to the level that you need to in order to actually get something out of this whole idea of challenges. Um, so accountability is very, very, very key, but you know what those things are that make you uncomfortable. But if you're gonna choose one of those things, make sure it's something that actually makes you better as well, that not just makes you uncomfortable, but in the process of becoming uncomfortable, makes you a better person in the process. I will hold you accountable. Yeah. Seriously. I thought yeah. he was going to say, and so I'm looking at you guys, that next race coming up. See, Let's do coming, it. Let's do it. you're coming with. Not, not ask me about it. It's like, I don't want to run in the dark alone. Anymore. I need a bigger headlamp. Yeah, a bigger headlamp. Well, we'll definitely have in the show notes on, on how folks can connect with you, Ben, yeah. if they want to have that accountability partner. Straight up, dude, I will hold, if 100 people, because Right now, you know, zero people showed up, so I have a big, a big opening. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so if anyone wants to get held accountable, I can do it for sure. Yeah, Ben, thanks so much. Or if so you much. just want to get held. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can hold me. Yeah. It's a mutual transaction. Yeah. Well, guys, I appreciate yeah. it. And if you're at home, if you're lucky enough to be in an, in an area of comfort, start strategically adding those challenges to your life so you're better calloused and you're better prepared to take on those unexpected challenges that come up. If you're going through an unexpected challenge, as Ben said, it's okay to panic, it's okay to have that anxiety. But at some point in time, I love what Tim was saying, ask yourself what, not why, and start analyzing on how you can navigate that, accept where you are, and navigate yourself to the solution. I also want to invite you guys to join our Facebook group, search The Modern Man on Facebook to keep this conversation going and also set up accountability. We are all members of those groups and we're happy to connect with you, so make sure you search for that and we'll, of course, continue to keep that conversation going. But for now, accept your challenges, dominate your challenges, because I know you can. Go out there and be a modern man. Mm -hmm.